this is Elijah and in this video I will be giving an introduction to embedded systems. As an outline we will be talking about what an embedded system is, the difference between a general computing system and an embedded system, how are they classified, what are the major application areas and what is the purpose of embedded systems. Before we dive deep into understanding embedded systems, let us take a pause and appreciate how embedded systems, or as I like to call them, silent friends of our society, have transformed our lives. We have so many of them around, and yet, many a times we fail to notice their presence. Yet, dutifully, without complaint, they serve us. In today's world, with technology so deeply penetrated into our lives, one would hardly find any electronic device which is not embedded. So, what is an embedded system? An embedded system is an electronic or electromechanical system designed to perform a specific function and is a combination of both hardware and firmware. It is also called software. Well, it's an electronic or electromechanical system made of microcontrollers, memory elements, interfaced IOs, sensors and actuators. It is designed to perform a specific function. Unlike general computing systems, embedded systems are designed to meet a specific need. It is tailored around that need, which makes choosing the right hardware and software very important. We'll talk about this aspect as we go deeper into the course at a later time. Now, let us try and compare between two microfamilies. Yes, the general computing systems versus embedded systems. A general computing system has generic hardware and a general purpose OS. Consider a personal computer. Generic hardware like keyboards, mouse, a cabinet, monitor, speaker systems, etc. And a general purpose OS. Consider a Windows OS. The OS can handle a variety of tasks. In contrast to that, in embedded systems, one has a special purpose hardware and some embedded software for the same. Consider a DVD player as an example. It has a few buttons to interact has a few types of supported output formats, and the software is also specific. The applications in a general computing system is alterable based on the need and preference of the user. Based on the software you use, you can run videos, play games, listen to music, use, for, use the PC for engineering calculations, etc. An embedded system, on the other hand, comes with a pre-programmed and non-alterable software. In a DVD player, the software can't be used for engineering calculations, for example. Recently though, some embedded systems which run on some kind of OS have provided ways to update it to a newer version. But this too is very limited. With a fixed hardware, there aren't many changes that the software can alter. Performance is a key factor for general computing systems. This translates to faster is better. Over the years, we have seen computer CPUs going faster and faster, from a few megahertz to now gigahertz even. On the other hand, embedded system's performance is application specific. Some may have power consumption as the primary requirement, especially for battery powered applications. Others may require that the memory is limited. So it all depends on the kind of need it is designed for. In general computing systems, response times aren't time critical. The system works fairly well with delays. Depending on the number of applications running, the resources are shared and the response times aren't deterministic. Embedded systems, well, many of them work on a deterministic time frame. Many applications are time critical. We'll talk a bit more upon this later on. Because of the huge diversity in embedded systems, their classification can be done in several ways. Let us see four ways they can be classified based on generations, based on complexity and performance, on deterministic behavior, and finally, based on triggering events. Embedded systems have seen a lot of general trends from the time they have entered the market. We can divide the trends in four generations. In the first generation, 4-bit and 8-bit microcontrollers were used, like 8085 or Z80. The hardware was simple in design 
and the software was mostly written in assembly. Examples of products are digital keypads, stepper motor control units, etc. By the second generation, 4-bit microcontrollers were obsolete. Systems were now designed using either the 8-bit or 16-bit controllers. Another major change was that the instruction set was more complex and powerful. Examples are data acquisition systems and SCADA. In the third generation, 16-bit and 32-bit controllers were the trend. Even digital signal processors and application-specific integrated circuits were tailored for specific needs. The instruction set further increased in complexity and power. Instruction pipelining was done to read code from memory faster. Another trend was that real-time operating systems and general-purpose operating systems were being used for products. An example of this generation would be the several works in the field of robotics. Our present times is the fourth generation of embedded systems. Now, system on chip, reconfigurable processors, and multi-core processors are very common. The embedded systems have high performance and many peripherals are being integrated on the same chip. At the same time, the size is becoming smaller and smaller. The need of modern applications cannot be met without an RTOS now. Examples would be smartphone devices, mobile internet devices, etc. So, what's next? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? When I started to see that embedded systems are now becoming more and more complex and trending towards or at least overlapping the general computing systems area, let's just wait and watch on what happens next. Based on complexity and performance, embedded systems can be classified as small scale, medium scale, and large scale. Small scale embedded systems are simple in the types of application they handle. The system isn't time critical, and thus there is no operating system to manage it. Low cost 8 bit or 4 bit microcontrollers are used. A simple example would be an electronic toy. In medium scale embedded systems, the complexity increases in both hardware and software. As a result, operating systems are required, either general purpose or real time. Microcontrollers used would be 16-bit or 32-bit. In large-scale embedded systems, both the hardware and software are highly complex. These are mission critical and thereby demand high performance and accuracy. 32-bit and 64-bit RISC processors are used here. They come with a very advanced instruction set. A high-performance RTOS is used to meet the demands of the application. Examples of such embedded systems would be decoding, encoding of media, cryptography, etc. The third classification would be based on the deterministic behavior. A deterministic embedded system would be a system which responds in a given time frame. Many applications demand that the embedded system should do the task assigned in a fixed amount of time. We call them real-time systems. Based on the severity of the response time expected, that it is a bounded time or an unbounded time requirement, the embedded systems are classified as soft real-time system and hard real-time system. We'll discuss about these two in detail at a later time in the course. The fourth and final classification criteria is based on the triggering event. Based on the triggering event, we can classify embedded systems as either event-triggered or time-triggered. Time-triggered embedded systems operate at fixed intervals of time, whereas event-triggered depend on the user to perform an activity and based on that, the system would react appropriately. Now that we have seen the different classification, let us move ahead in our quest. Let us try and see the different application areas of embedded systems. We come across many consumer electronics based on embedded systems like Bluetooth speakers, iPads, and camcorders. In our homes, we use household appliances like washing machines, television, etc. Embedded systems help in our safety in applications like 
CCTV cameras, fire alarms, and further make life easy for us by automating tasks like a sprinkler system. Our vehicles too use many other systems from GPS navigation, ignition systems to anti-lock braking systems. Embed systems are used in telecom applications like telephone switches and smartphones. Computers too use embedded systems for extended activities like printers, scanners and several smaller functions in a laptop. For networking, embedded systems are used for routers, network switches and even firewalls. For many healthcare needs, embedded systems are used, for example, in monitoring machines like EEG and ECG. Embedded systems are used for measurement instruments as well. For measuring voltages and currents, we use multimeters. Further, we use logic analyzers and even digital oscilloscopes. For banking applications, embedded systems are used in ATM machines, currency counters, and point of sale equipments. In the modern world of smart cards, barcode readers, memory card readers, and smart card readers are very important. Embedded systems are used for such applications as well. Another area where embedded systems are used majorly is for power electronic applications like inverters, switch mode power supplies, motor control, etc. These were just a few areas where embedded systems are used. With over billions of microcontrollers sold in the world, it doesn't come as a surprise that we are surrounded by our silent friends everywhere. Based on the purpose for which embedded systems are designed, there are six main areas to note. They are Data can either be analog, that is continuous, or digital, that is discrete. A range of applications work with data collection, storage, and different forms of representation. For example, consider this digital oscilloscope. It is used to store data in USB drives. It can transmit data to PC directly using serial communication interfaces. It processes the data to find out RMS value, mean value, average value, etc. And it also displays the measured data on a graphic LCD screen. For the purpose of communication of data, several ways exist in embedded systems. There are wired methods that use protocols like RS-232, USB, TCP IP, etc. For wireless communication, one can opt for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, etc. An example for communication-based embedded system is a wireless router. Monitoring is based on sensors. Several sensors can be deployed and the data they gather can be monitored. Some examples would be in medical applications where the heartbeat of a person may be monitored and anomalies may alert the doctor to take further action. Similarly, in an industrial environment, sensor data can be accumulated and displayed in the control room for further actions. Processing of signals is a major purpose in many embedded systems. They can be used in speech coding, image processing, audio and video codecs, etc. There are many advantages of a digital control system, which works on sensors and actuators. The sensor data acts as feedback to the system, and based on the reference, the error is minimized by corrected action. An example of the same would be an air conditioning system, which tries to control the temperature by turning on and turning off the compressor. Many consumer and industrial applications now demand customized UIs for their users, with buttons, switches, keypads, graphic LCDs, touchscreen interfaces, speakers, and vibration alerts. Embedded systems, thankfully, can cater to such needs as well. In a nutshell, what we have seen in this video is, what is an embedded system? The differences between general computing systems and embedded systems. The several different ways that we can classify embedded systems. Some application areas, and finally, 
purposes of a merit system. Thank you for watching this video. If you think the video deserves some credit, please give it a thumbs up. Do let me know what kind of videos you would like to see in the comments. You are the judge to decide if this video has earned your subscription. And if you liked it, please share it with others as well. With this, I sign off. Your friend, Elijah. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.